Hi, I'm Molly. Welcome to the first in my series of Quick and Dirty Yoga Philosophy. Um, today we're going to talk about the kosha model. The koshas are something that come out of the Taittiriya Upanishad, and it's a model that I've found has been extremely helpful for understanding myself as existing on multiple different levels, also for teaching my students in yoga, helping them to differentiate and become more aware of themselves on different levels. And then in terms of working with my clients in therapy, allowing them to uh, understand their healing and provide more um, multi-dimensional Intentionality and more hope and possibility in terms of their healing. So I'd like to introduce you to this model. It's called the Kosha model, and again, it comes from the Taittiriya Upanishad. So in the Kosha model, it is believed that we have five different levels of being. The word Kosha means something like sheep or body. And in this model, it said that we have five different of these sheaths or bodies. So in other words, again, we exist on five different layers. And we can attend to each of these different layers, either for ourselves or for others, if we have some understanding of what these five layers are. And really, they're quite simple and really, really practical. Before we get started, one thing that I just wanted to point out to you is that oftentimes when people talk about these, uh, this model, they will draw it out in um, using these five different concentric circles, four, five. And depending on the teacher, they might talk about the layers as going from the most subtle to the most gross. So in other words, the most subtle level being in here, like the, the very center of you, like your divine spark, your soul. So that would sort of be the soul level and then moving outward into your most gross level, which would be way out here, and that would be your physical level. But sometimes people will talk about it the completely opposite way, and they'll think about that innermost part, so like this part of me is the, the inner part, that's the physical, and that each of the other layers are, are becoming com uh, increasingly more subtle, or. Um, increasingly more sort of exterior from that physical. So the outermost layer in that case would be that bliss or soul level. So I just wanted to point that out to you um, so that if you are studying these with another teacher and they're using the, and, and I hope you will be, or studying them more with me on Samaria Yoga Teacher Training, um, and they're showing you this model of concentric circles, don't be confused if one teacher ha has it going from subtle to gross and the other one has it going from gross to subtle. They're just visual aids. Um, you don't, there, there's not one particular way that's described in the Taittiriya Upanishad. In, in, in terms of concentric circles. Um, however, we do, we can think of them in a particular order, and in that order, if we number them, we're gonna go from most gross to most subtle. So, the, each one of them has the word maya in it. So everything is gonna be something maya kosha. And I'll write that down if I can get that green off. So everything's going to be something Maya Kosha. So it's going to be blank Maya Kosha. And remember that Kosha means body or sheath and Maya actually means something like made of. So each of the different levels is going to be a body made of something or other, whatever it's made of. So again, there's said to be five of these. The first one is Ana Maya Kosha. And here, that ana means something like, excuse me, food. So the physical body is considered to be very literally the body made of food. So that makes sense to us. Um, not only is it like the most gross level, it's the level that we can actually feel, it's the level that we dress, it's the level that we look at in the mirror, it's the level that we feel um, very, uh, discrete pleasure and very discrete 
pain. Um, it's also the part of us when we think about like comfort food and we feel like we want grounding. Sometimes when we're too off in those emotional levels or we're feeling sort of destabilized for whatever reason. You know, we want macaroni and cheese, we want mashed potatoes, we want you know, apple cobbler, all of those things. It's like, it, it's like they're weighing us down and bringing us back to earth, right? So that idea of wanting that comfort food makes a lot of sense. It's wanting for us to get back into our bodies. Um, I want to differentiate too when I think about the, the awareness of ourselves, um, uh, body awareness. I'm not talking about the kind of body awareness where we might say like, oh, that person is a professional, uh, I don't know, ballerina and they just, or acrobat and, and they have, you know, extreme body awareness and can, you know, move this part of themselves and differentiate it from that part of themselves. I mean, that's a, that's a particular kind of body awareness for sure. What I'm talking about here is just like a general sense of being aware of myself as a body. And most people have that awareness of themselves, if not, if not all people having that awareness of themselves as this, this, this body. That's the part that we tend to connect with the most. In IMT, that's what we use. We call it the gateway, that we go in through that physical body in order to be able to get to those more subtle levels. So the very first level, that physical level, is the anamaya kosha, or the body made of food. That's physical. The next level is called the pranamaya kosha. So I'm just gonna write pranamaya, and then kosha's there. So prana is oftentimes um, translated as breath. It's important to remember that breath and prana are not exactly the same thing. Prana would be like the umbrella term. Prana is in fact like vital energy, or sometimes people will say like it's life force. So breath is a part of that vital energy. Part, breath is a part of our life force. Breath is certainly a vehicle for prana or a way that we can get prana to move around in our body. We just don't want that to be a one-on-one -on -one, uh, translation. It's not exactly the same. So prana is really more like energy or, um, or life force. So the pranamaya kosha is that energy body. So when we're thinking about ourselves as energetic beings, sometimes it's helpful to think about either different vocabulary, so things like spacious versus um, contracted, or rarefied versus dense, or light versus heavy, like those are sort of energetic kinds of experiences or feelings. We might also have some kind of like a, a, a visualization. I think of um, often think of like a running stream, especially because the yogis talked about this sushuna, this central channel in our body that's sometimes uh, translated as the sacred stream. But if you thought about like your body and the energy in your body of moving like water, we might be able to identify different places in our body where it felt sluggish or it felt stagnant or it's not moving at all, or maybe it's like moving so quickly that it's making us feel all jittery. Um, so it's a way for us to just really identify identify feelings of energy in our body. We can also think about like, oh, that person has such great energy, or like, oh, that person has really creepy energy. Like all of that kind of, um, that kind of language is all talking about ourselves on an energetic level. And we can start to differentiate how we feel physically from how we feel energetically. Like physically, I might feel just totally fine, but energetically, I might say something like, oh, I just, my energy is really low today. I don't really feel like doing X, Y, Z. But it's not because really physically anything big is going on. So it's a way to differentiate and, and feel this sense of multidimensionality. Then we have the vinya, excuse me, then we have the manomaya kosha. So the third level is manomaya kosha. And that's that word mano, that's also manas, which means the mind. And so this is the body made of mind. But we want to remember that 
um, the yogis have always believed, and now science is catching up with it, that consciousness actually resides everywhere in the body, or differently stated, consciousness doesn't actually reside in any particular place. So the idea of consciousness, or the idea of mind then, is not located in the head the way that we might think of it. Like if I asked you to you know, point to your mind, and we point to our head, or we're always trying to differentiate it from the brain, just knowing that here we might think of, if we're pointing to the mind, we might actually point to the heart, the heart mind. It's all my feelings, all of my thoughts, um, distraction, my general feelings. Do I feel happy or sad or neutral or irritated? What am I thinking about? Um, what is the quality of my thoughts? All of that is that manomaya kosha. So that's the, the thoughts and feelings. Um, or I could say, uh, yeah, just so that we're the, the, excuse me, the heart mind. So again, just thinking about in terms of differentiation, I might have like this terrible cold, my whole body feels physically terrible, and even energetically, I'm like, oh, I have no energy. Um, I just feel completely depleted, but I could still be like in a good mood, right? If someone was coming to visit me at my house and I'm like all wrapped up and I'm sitting on my couch and I've got my tissues and I've got my tea, I could also be laughing and joyous and be having a fun time or thinking about something that's exciting to me. So that can be differentiated to how I feel physically or energetically can be really different from how I feel at that level of my, of my mind and my heart. Um, which is really, again, super helpful in thinking about our own healing and wellness and then particularly thinking about the same for perhaps our therapy clients um, or even our yoga students if that's, if that's who you're working with. And then the fourth level is called the Vinyana Maya Kosha. Vinyana Maya. And this word here, Jnana, means something like knowledge, and you might know that from other studies, that that word jnana comes up in other places in our yoga studies. And then when you put that V in front of that, that VI in Sanskrit, that's terming it special. So this is the body made of special knowledge. This is often translated as the witness body or the wisdom body. Um, or you've often heard people maybe talking about like developing witness consciousness, or I'm going to cultivate witness consciousness. That wisdom body, that vinyana maya kosha, we can think about it really in terms of like meta-awareness. It's my ability to think about what I'm thinking about, my ability to sort of watch myself from afar. The thing about the Vinyana Maya Kosha is it's always a compassionate presence. It's always a loving and benevolent presence. And so, um, for example, two quick examples. One is I might just be ruminating and thinking about something that I said and I wish I hadn't said or said it wrong or did someone read me wrong and I just feel so bad and I'm playing it over and over and over again in my mind. That's the Mano Maya Kosha is really prevailing there. If I bring in that Vinyana Maya Kosha, that compassionate awareness, that's the part of me that's able to step outside and say, you know, that's okay. That happens sometimes, Molly. Like, sometimes you, you say the wrong thing, or in my case, it seems like a lot of times I say the wrong thing. I'm sure I'm not alone in that. Um, but it's that witness consciousness that allows you to say, you're a good person, you made a mistake, you can make amends, you can move on. Um, another way that I think about it is often working with people in bereavement, and when they're feeling just totally wrecked, for example, if they can bring in that witness consciousness, that, that compassionate presence, that, that wisdom presence, that can sort of look down on them and say, you're not going to be like this forever. Someday you are going to feel like things are going to be okay again, even when your immediate sense is that nothing is ever going to be okay again. So this is where, especially therapeutically or, or in our own healing, really developing that sense of vinyana maya kosha, that witness consciousness can just be so, so powerful. And then finally, we have the Ananda Maya Kosha. And that Ananda, we want to really pronounce that Ananda because Ananda is the word for bliss. So the Ananda Maya Kosha is like bliss, soul. Uh, my Swami teacher always says it's just freedom from suffering. 
Uh, and in the yogic view, suffering always comes from separation. So it can be freedom from separation. It's this place where I feel ultimately and infinitely connected. So when we're thinking about that for ourselves or for our clients or our students, we're wanting to develop that part of ourselves or that part of others that feels that deep connection, that feels connected to divine presence, that feels connected even if um, we find divine presence in nature, in the vastness of the ocean, or the vastness of the sky, that part of us that feels our own connectedness and our own sense of belonging in that greater cosmic um, mystery, that's the Anandamaya Kosha. And that's a part that we also want to feel connected with. And in fact, in the yogic view, as we feel connected with that Anandamaya Kosha, going back to each of the other levels, it's a part, it's a place of reconciliation. That no matter what is occurring on any of those other levels, when I can connect to that total soul level, to that bliss level, I'm always going to be okay. So again, if we go all the way back to those concentric circles that I drew for you in the beginning, um, and it, again, it doesn't matter, I'm gonna do it from the, let's see, I'll do from the gross to the subtle then we would have this outermost layer. Our outermost layer of being is our physical level. And that's that anamaya kosha. It's the body made of food. And then we would have this little bit more subtle level, and that's our energetic level. And that energetic level is our body made of prana. Oops, oh yeah, prana, or, or life force, or vital energy. And then we would have that thoughts and feelings level little bit more subtle. So in the yogic view, our ability to connect with our mind and our feelings is actually more subtle than our ability for us to connect with energy. So you can think a little bit about that. So thoughts and feelings, that's the mano maya kosha. I also like to think of that, about that one again as the heart mind. And then we have this witness consciousness. So that's even more subtle, our ability to have, again, that meta-awareness, our ability to comment or view ourselves from afar. Again, you can think of, there's a quote from Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, we are spiritual beings having a human experience, not human beings having a spiritual experience. So us spiritual beings having that human experience, that's that, that's that vinyana maya kosha. That's our ability for us to see ourselves having that human experience and having deep compassion for the human experience, the human condition. And then finally, there's this in the middle. Oh, that's our most beautiful, most subtle, most uh, liberating, and that, is the Ananda Maya Kosha. That is the body made of bliss, connection, soul. We might even call it the state of yoga itself. So there's your quick and dirty five koshas. Um, model for looking at, uh, at multidimensionality comes from the Taittiriya Upanishad. Um, check it out. Think about it for yourself, think about it for your yoga students and for your clients, and um, consider coming and studying with me on some Arya Yoga teacher training. You'll learn lots more about it. Have a super great day. Kete vaya bien.